here we are in between two great feasts, the Ascension and Pentecost. And I am sure I'm not alone in being grateful that our bishops a couple of years ago decided to go back to celebrating Ascension on Ascension Thursday. And that gives us this uh, special time, this novena of days between Ascension Thursday and Pentecost to prepare for this most wonderful feast of Pentecost. In a way, Pentecost is the Cinderella feast in the, in the churches here, but it is of equal importance to Easter and to Christmas. The three crucial feasts, the three pivotal points in the whole of our Christian faith, our Lord's birth at the Incarnation, so his becoming man, the consequences of his life and ministry leading to his death and, and then the glorious resurrection, and then the, the continuation of that work. It wasn't just a uh, work isolated to a historical period in the past. Um, and that, that comes with the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and the expansion of the church, which was phenomenal. And which hadn't, it couldn't have happened while Jesus was physically on earth. It had to be the, uh, I say it couldn't have happened, but the, the reality is that we, we were given the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the third person of the Blessed Trinity to be in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds, and uh, in our community, so that we could be Christ for the world. That's what, that's what the Holy Spirit makes us. So these days are between now and, and next weekend, I think are very important days in which to pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit, the renewal of his gifts in our lives, and uh, and to ask for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit so that um, we can move on. The Holy Spirit, the metaphor for the Holy Spirit is wind. And wind is, doesn't remain, doesn't like, it opposes stagnation. It's the opposite of stagnation and wants us uh, that the wind freshens the air, changes the air, gives us new direction puts wind in our sails, puts movement into our lives. It's a great, uh, so, so this, this time is very, very important, but let's not neglect the ascension either. In some ways, the ascension is a little harder for us to grasp, but the prayers for the mass for, for ascension are the ones that really help us to understand what the ascension means, where we say of Jesus, where he has gone before us, we hope to follow. So the Feast of the Ascension uh, underlines for us the, the truth that we are destined to share life with God, the fullness of life, a life of bliss unimaginable, that is what God wants for us. And I think we, I don't know whether I'm alone in this, but I think we, 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 we find that very hard to believe that God wants that life for us. We feel that we have to earn it. We feel that we have to be good. Uh, well, of course we have to be good. But do we, do we get to heaven because we're good? We get to heaven because the Lord takes us there and there's there's good and bad in all of us as we know and there'll be good and bad of us until the end of our mortal lives so the ascension is a great uh, feast of promise and a great feast a feast of hope where he has gone we by God's grace will follow 
And Jesus said, I want you to be with me where I am. He says that in John's Gospel. I want you to be with me where I am. Listen to those words. Where is the Lord? The, the Lord is, is with the Father. And that's the promise that he holds out to all of us. And if I might put it this way, it should, it should help us to approach our own death with greater serenity. We, we know we're sinners and God knows that we're, that we're sinners and we know that God knows we are sinners. So, but, but we're, we're the beneficiaries of the infinite grace of Christ. So let's just, let's just entrust ourselves to that. Yes, amend our lives. Yes, lead the best uh, lives of love and honesty and good morality that we, that we can. But the great, the great call to us is to trust. Let me just give you an image uh, that is an easy one, I think, but one that helps me. And it's an image of a boat and a sail. And all we re if we really want to make progress, dear sisters and brothers, if we, we, if we want to get anywhere in our boat, we have to hoist the sail. Now, we can't make the wind blow. But we know that if the sail is up, the wind will blow. And that wind is the Holy Spirit. And we rely on the Holy Spirit to take us to our destination. I want those who have given you, I, I want those you have given me, says Jesus to his Father, to be with me where I am, so that my own joy may be in them and their joy be complete. Amen. Happy Feast of Ascension. Happy Feast of Pentecost to come. Uh, just brief notices this week, dear friends. Please keep in mind the uh, Provincial of the Carmelites, Father Kevin Alban, whose funeral is taking place at Aylesford on Monday. And pray for the Carmelites who have lost uh, a wonderful, charismatic uh, leader. Uh, and of course, he will have to be replaced and that's not going to be easy. So please pray for the Carmelites in, we have in Faversham and in Aylesford. And we will also Next Saturday, be having our scripture reflection again. And uh, we'll look forward to welcoming people to that at nine o'clock next Saturday morning. You will see from the newsletter that there are new offertory envelope boxes, and they will be available through Sister Corin. Uh, they do it to start at the beginning of June. Good. Have a good weekend and a lovely week ahead.